for this computer. Hey everyone, he's Kevin Kaufman, I'm Fred Weaver, and today we bring you a PSSA. No, not just a PSA, this is a public service and safety announcement. Uh, specifically, we're gonna talk a little bit about the financial safety uh, here in our public service announcement today. So Kevin, we wanna educate and inform our friends, our family members, our fellow real estate agents, our clients right now. There's a lot of information going on out there and it's very difficult to, uh, to, to sort through all this. And so our, our, uh, our goal here, uh, our objective here today is to educate and inform some people out there so they can make empowered choices over the coming days, weeks, and months. Yeah, there's no doubt. There's so much information going on out there about the stimulus package, what help is available, what help's not available, the difference in, um, so, you know, for me, what I keep saying is I keep hearing all these different terms, right? We're going to talk about some of those like forbearance or deferral, things like that, uh, that quite frankly, their be words are being used. And, and I don't think most people know what those are or what they really mean, but yeah. they, you get the concept for them. So talk about some stuff like that because I think there's a lot of confusion going on out there in the marketplace these days. Yeah, so right off the top, here's the deal. If you have the financial ability to pay your rent here in April and in May and in June and going forward, do it. If you have the financial ability to pay your mortgage, please do it. Now, if you find yourself in a situation where you have had a loss of income or you have found yourself furloughed, you found yourself in unknown chartered territories right now, there are a lot of options that are coming out. Um, just 10 days or so ago, Kevin, a bunch of the uh, mortgage companies and the Mortgage Bankers Association, they all got together and they wrote a big letter, right, to the president and different members of, uh, of our, our government. And they said, hey, we need to streamline and simplify this. Well, unfortunately, here we are 10 days later, nothing streamlined, nothing simplified. So all these companies are now coming out with their own things. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac came out a couple days ago and said, hey, we had this, uh, this plan uh, that we were going to roll out, a forbearance plan in late 2020. We're going to move it up so it's available now. FHA just came out today and said, hey, we've got this plan. So, Kevin, let's go ahead. Before we get into what's out there, let's define some terms because – What's happening in the media and what's happening out there by banks is they're throwing around terms, but their definitions are not always the same. And this is creating a lot of confusion and chaos and could be harming some people or, uh, or not putting you in a position to make an empowered choice. So first of all, the company you make a mortgage payment to every month, Kevin, the company that, that sends you the mortgage statement or emails it to you, that's called the what? That's called the loan servicer, right? So a lot of people will just say my bank or my mortgage company, right? When reality, what we're talking about is the loan servicer. That does not mean that the loan was made by that company, right? You could make your payments every month to Bank of America. Bank of America may be the loan servicer and also not be the investor, meaning it's not their money that you borrowed to buy your home. Right. So the loan investor describes he whose money, if you will, is on the line. Right. And he whose money is on the line is not always the one that collects the payments on that company's behalf. So many people have heard of companies like Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. They're referred to as GSEs. Right. Government sponsored entities. Uh, Kevin would also say they're government stolen, stolen. entities. Uh, they have been in conservatorship since uh, the last downfall we had in our economy, and they may be on their way out, but that's for another day. But here's the deal. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, they, they own, they're investors of approximately 60% of loans in the company, uh, in the country, but they do not service those loans. So when they come out with guidelines, you're still, even though the servicer is supposed to follow what the investor may say, that's not always the case. So want to describe the servicers who you make your payments to, who the monthly mortgage statement comes from, the investors who actually own owns the money and typically is the one creating most of the rules, but the servicer is the one that's putting the agreements in writing on behalf of the investor who apparently created the rules. Are you confused yet? Now you see where we're going here. 
Then you've got these terms, Kevin, and, and you know, even I've had to brush up on some of these terms because how I understood them 10 years ago versus how they're being used today is very different. So you have terms like forbearance and deferral. Traditionally speaking, a forbearance is an option that's given to folks who have gone in default on their mortgage and then they're allowed to not make their mortgage payment for a couple of months or a season or a period of time, at which once that season or period of time ends, uh, they then have to catch up their payments. That's traditionally what a forbearance was. Now that catch up could be a lump sum all at once catch up in three months, six months, or it could be, hey, Mr. Kaufman, you haven't paid us your $1,500 mortgage payment for the last four months. You owe us six grand. So what we're going to do is for the next 12 months, we'll add another $500 on top of your normal $1,500 mortgage payment. And a year from now, you'll be all caught up on what you owe us. That would be sort of a traditional forbearance. A deferral is one of those things that really is not a traditional mortgage option, but it's being tossed around, right? And a deferral is simply where, as a bank, I may say, Mr. Kaufman, you don't have to pay us for the next three months. Months. You may or may not have to be delinquent. That's a little questionable right now, depending on which banks you listen to. Uh, you may or may not have to be delinquent. And we'll put your amount that you owe us on the back of your loan, which means uh, in a couple months from now, you won't have to pay us more or come up with extra money. But when you refi or you sell your home, Kevin, uh, or you pay it off 29 years from now, you're going to have to make a few more extra payments to us. Right. So big differences there in the terms forbearance and deferral, right? In fact, they're night and day different. They get used a lot the same. You also talked about, uh, while, you, while you're defining those, Fred, you talked about delinquent versus not delinquent, right? Because historically going back, think back to when we started our business, Group 4610, back in 2008, you and I were doing mostly short sales and we were helping a lot of people. And at that time, most banks required, most servicers and investors required that a homeowner or borrower be delinquent, meaning they have missed a payment or two or three prior to even being considered for a short sale approval, right? So delinquent, I've missed some payments, non-delinquent, obviously I'm still current on my payments. Yeah, so as an example, Kevin, like whether or not you're delinquent is sort of in question depending upon who your bank servicer or investor is. And it's, it's, also, uh, it's also in question that Delink if you are delinquent, are there credit impacts? Now, why are we bringing up credit right now? Well, because I would hate to see some of my family members and friends and past clients and other real estate agents out there encouraging people to take forbearances, not recognizing that some of these forbearance plans and options that banks are, are offering um, they're coming with negative credit consequences, which then can put people in a difficult position to refinance or sell and buy another home again soon. Now, granted, we don't know what all this is going to play out for, but we just want to caution you out there. Be educated and informed. If you're talking to your bank right now, first of all, don't trust or or if you want to trust, that's fine, but verify that's everything fine. you're told verbally and get it in writing and make sure that credit consequences and delinquency is discussed in whatever you're getting in writing from your bank, your servicer, your investor, your lender. Yeah, and I would say this too, if for some reason you can't, like they're not going to put it in writing for you, uh, record, the, record a phone call or two because when you, if, what happens if they don't honor what they say, let's say they say they're not going to ping you uh, from a credit standpoint, they're not going to report you as delinquent. And then they do. The only way you're going to challenge that is by having proof that they, they said that it was fine, that they wouldn't do that. So record the call, worst case scenario, if you can't get it in writing. Uh, again, we say trust, but verify, get it all in writing. And if you have to get it on record, vo uh, voice recording as well. Yeah, now we know this is a tough emotional time for a lot of people. And when you're in an emotional situation and when you're in a financial hardship, it's sometimes hard to think clearly and think straight. So, you know, you may want to come back and watch this video again. We're trying to really, again, this is a PSSA. This is a public service and safety, financial safety and health announcement here, right? So also want to make sure people, as much as possible, make a good business decision around your personal financial situation. Remove the emotion as best as possible. Possible and think not only about the next few days, weeks, or months, but also the next few years. So as an example, if you're somebody who's falling behind on your payments right now, or that's happening to you here in the month of April, you, you may want to consider looking at, could I sell my house today? Could I potentially walk away and put 20, 
40, 50, 100 or more thousand dollars in my pocket, go rent something in the meantime, and then get back in the game after I've been able to establish some income. That's a very different plan than, hey, let's see how long I can stay in the house. Let's see how many payments I don't have to make. Then I may find some credit consequences. Then maybe three or six months from now, things aren't as good as I expected them. And now I got bad credit. I ran through all of my, my money. I maybe even, uh, you know, maybe even liquidated retirement and stocks and stuff like that to stay in a house that I no longer get to stay in for the long run. So I know these are hard times, but I really encourage you to try to make good business decisions around things. Sometimes the best thing to do is get out sooner than later, put that money on the sideline, Go through a, a period of time where you have to move in with some friends, family members, get a cheap rental, and then and then see how quickly you get out of this and you reestablish some income. And then maybe you'll be in a better position to buy a home. Maybe interest rates will be even better six and 12 months from now. Maybe prices will have, have gone down. We don't know. But the point is, don't bury yourself with too many late payments and don't run through your savings. And I'm saying that from a place of having been there, done that, and, and reflecting back on things I wish I'd done differently. I wouldn't have ran my credit cards up and I wouldn't have burned through all my savings savings trying to keep my mortgages current and keep the current situation that I was in alive. I mean, you know, that's the thing too. I, I think about uh, all the folks that we helped with short sales over the years. And one of the things that always was so hard to watch is somebody who waited to come to us for short sale help uh, after they had gone through their savings and oftentimes their retirement. So I can remember seeing some folks go through hundred, hundred and fifty, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and literally their life savings, trying to keep up their, you know, their home and their rental property and all this other stuff, trying to write it out only to realize like, you know what, I'm not going to be able to make it right. They couldn't make ends meet. And so then we would ultimately help them with a the short sale. Whereas had they just pulled that trigger a year or two years before, while they would still be in an unfortunate situation, they'd have their retirement and their life savings still to their name to be able to kind of start rebuilding with. And uh, trust me, you don't want to rebuild from zero. If you can rebuild with money in your pocket, uh, start out with money in your pocket. That's a much better scenario. Yeah, and without being too overly political, this isn't a red versus blue statement. This is just no matter who's in the government in power, what we're going to see and what we're seeing it right now, we'll see it again, is a little bit of relief is being given to homeowners, a little bit of help. There's money coming, right? There's some stimulus money coming to all of us, but that money's not going to last us a real long time. If you have a family and you got car payments and a house payment and groceries and utilities and things to pay for, it's going to help you a little bit. But you know who's going to get a lot of the money is these major corporations because we can't let them go bankrupt or the entire economy and the whole thing would fall on itself. So here's the deal. Um, you've got to really take care of yourself. You can't hope that the government or the banks are going to come in and take care of you. The best way you can take care of yourself is, is make sure you're protecting your cash and your money as much as possible and not running through all that, right? That's, I think, what a lot of us learned the last, last time around. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, there's a lot of questions. There's going to be a lot more things that come up. Um, and we just want to make sure that you know, anybody who's watching this or Anybody else who, who you know who hasn't seen this yet, maybe you want to send this to them, know that there's resources out there for you. There's people to talk to who can sit down with you and go through your options. For myself and Fred and so many other folks that we work with would absolutely be willing to do that. We, what we don't want to do is see people just kind of bury their head in the sand because it gets hard. Yeah, and, and Kevin, I'm going to get a tiny bit in the weeds. I'll be fast with it. But I just want you guys to know, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, they own mo the majority of the loans in the country. And so right now, it doesn't appear that they're going to provide a lot of options for people without going delinquent. So again, really consider the future consequences in your in your short-term situation that you might be in. Um, also, our best advice is always reach out to your lender before you're delinquent. Don't start having the conversation after you're delinquent. Guess what? If your mortgage payment was due April 1st and you haven't made it or your rent was due April 1st and you haven't made it, from a mortgage standpoint, if you're an owner of a property, you're technically not delinquent from a credit reporting standpoint until the first day of the next month. So you have it between now and May 1st to work something out with your lender, get something in writing from them, right? Do that now. Don't wait till April 29th to call your lender and say, I can't make my payment and give them 48 hours or less to help you out, right? And if you're a tenant, call your landlord now if you're struggling. Ask what options are available. But again, the best advice is to, is to pay your bills. I also quickly, Kevin, want to mention that FHA, the Federal Housing Administration, 
Um, they, they've done a lot of loans in the last seven years, right? For a lot of borrowers after we got out of the last, uh, last cycle that we were in. So from 2013 to 2020, they've done a lot of loans for borrowers with lower down payments and even lower credit scores. They just came out today and did roll out a forbearance plan. Their forbearance plan is somehow interlinked with a deferral plan. They're mixing the language all up. So we're going yep. to get a lot of clarity on that. And they're also throwing another term in play that I want to tell people in case you hear about this. Um, this one's called a partial claim. And a partial claim, Kevin, is like after you've been given a forbearance, you didn't have to make those four $1,500 mortgage payments. You could go to your lender, FHA, and your, your servicer, excuse me, and FHA is saying to your loan servicer, if you can, we've got some money set aside for partial claims. A partial claim is where they take that $6,000 you didn't pay over the last four months, in my example, Kevin, and they wrap it into a second mortgage. And in this case, they're saying it'll be interest-free, and they also tack it on to the very end of your loan and you don't have to pay it off until your first is paid off so that's just one more piece and I know that's a lot we're throwing at you but we want to educate and inform you you're gonna hear the word partial claim used out there as well so um, you know agents friends family members clients like please reach out to us if we can support you if you want help navigating some of these terms if you get an agreement from your bank and you want a second set of eyes we're not attorneys we're not going to give you legal opinions on anything but we'll at least tell you what concerns and questions we have and refer you over to the people that do have some authority from a legal perspective to, to give you that feedback um, we'd be happy to help you out so anything you want to add Kevin I hope we did a good job of just educating and, and informing here today and hopefully some people have uh, have a better understanding of, of what things look like and will at least think twice before just signing something or taking their bank's word verbally. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I think that's it, guys. Just reach out. You can reach us both here on Facebook or many of you have our phone numbers. Feel free to do that or, or email, whatever that looks like. Let us know what we can do to help you. We're here to help in times of uncertainty and uh, uh, just we wish the best for everybody. Yeah, stay safe out there.